take your questions on whatever you want to talk about. Robert. Uh, first of all, let me apologize this morning to both our guest speaker and everyone. I walked out of the house this morning, forgot the PA system, so I apologize. The Thelma has to speak at such a high tone. Well, I have such a soft voice. Yeah, that's you right. Just tell me if you can't hear me. <laughs> Two issues. Um, where we stand, the national ID card. I think it's quite well known that libertarians, constitutionalists, we are, are opposed to a national ID card. I'd like to know where you stand on that. And second, I know where you stood on the Tony McQueen show on House Bill 3202, the transportation, when you said we don't think it's going to pass, and unfortunately it did, but that was part B. Oh, yeah, I think today. National ID card. Oh, yeah. First of all, I don't support a national ID card. I do support that we have, when we do our driver's license, the real idea that you prove who you are, because we've seen way too much of that in Virginia. We know there are bad documents out there. And I do think part of an H2B program for a temporary worker coming in should be a tamper-proof card that identifies who they are that can't be duplicated and can't be sold. But I do not support a national ID card. Yes. Representative Drake, what, what do you see as the difference between a federal identification card and the real ID? The real ID is a driver's license that, if, see, we tried to do that in Virginia, and we couldn't get there when I was still in the House of Delegates. What we were only able to do in Virginia is require when you get your driver's license for the first time, or if it expires, or if you lose it, that you would have to prove that you're a U.S. citizen. Okay. Do you, um, if it's just a driver's license, then why would the association for the... Uh, American physicians and surgeons be against it. Over 40 and probably 54 organizations lobbied by an email the Department of Homeland Security early last May against the real ID. And there were privacy issues, there were health concerns, and I, I do not believe that the people who have had their lawyers study the real ID and study the text of it, which includes that the U.S. Attorney General will be replaced by the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. And that is in the text of the real ID. And, well, excuse me, Reverend. I, I, that's in the text that there's it's more than a driver's license. So I just wanted to bring that you, to your attention. It is not a, just a driver's license. Would you would you think on the Real ID Act and the see and remember states don't have to do the Real ID Act. It's optional. And if they do not, they will be penalized at that. No, no. If they don't do it, then you can't use your driver's license to enter a federal building or get on a plane. You oh, wow. have to have some other form of identification. They don't they aren't penalized financially. But that does is it establishes more than one tier of citizenship in this country by people who have done nothing wrong. Well. well, remember, a driver's license. Oh, okay. But a driver's license allows you to drive. If you also want to use it for some sort of federal identification, like coming into the Capitol, then I, I don't see anything wrong with making sure people who have driver's licenses are who they say they are and that they truly are citizens or. or <laughs> Um, question about uh, the Real ID Act. I've heard some people say that uh, it's not a national ID card because the uh, databases would be controlled by the states. But my question to you is, uh, what's the difference between 50 databases that the federal government has access to and one database that the federal government has access to? I, I just don't see... The, uh, the real difference other than instead of a federal card, we're just carrying a state card. Well, you're carrying a driver's license if that's the decision of your state to be able to have your driver's license used as a federal ID to be for federal identification purposes. That's what you're looking at. Now, our state didn't like it and said it would cost them a lot of money. My question to them was, because they tried to argue at first that every time you renewed your driver's license, you would have to go to DMV. My argument back was, once I show you that I'm a U.S. citizen through one of the forms of identification, why isn't that in your database? And then the next time I renew, to be able to do it like I can today online. Because remember, every other time you renew your driver's license in Virginia, you have to show up at DMV because they want to test your eyes. And I've been asking them for years, why don't you allow either people to have their eyes tested at DMV or present a letter from a licensed eye doctor showing that you've just had that test done. I don't know about you, I wear contacts, I go to the eye doctor once a year. But I still go to DMV and have my eyes tested for them. So 
there's ways around some of this cost. And the real bottom line here is to make sure who has that driver's license is legitimate, that they're here legally, that, um, that that's the point of it. And I certainly don't want us to have little numbers like in these science fiction things and, and everybody knows who we are and where we are. It's not what we believe in. Okay.